is now being recorded and will be posted on the county YouTube channel in the near future. Since the last commissioner's meeting, there's only one time that I'm aware of that more than one commissioner was together, and that was this morning uh, to talk to ABM. Nothing was discussed in that meeting that they'll not be discussing in this meeting. <clears throat> Um, in terms of correspondence, I would like to add that uh, Commissioner Egg Jeff Eggleston and myself were together Monday morning uh, with a representative of a 501c3. Her name is Carrie Swanson. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> um, since the last meeting, correspondence that the public may be interested in, uh, first of all, fiscal found that there is some unclaimed property items um, that's in the state repository, correct? Correct. So we'll be requesting that the state send that the balance would probably be less than $1,000 in total. <clears throat> On the 28th, there will be a spraying for black flies. Uh, in regards to our meeting in Columbus, I thought it would be helpful since we're having our town hall in Columbus uh, this week or next week, this week, um, I asked the assessment office to work up a letter explaining the differences between Erie and Warren County millage rates because Cory School District put out a letter to residents of Spring Creek and Columbus Townships basically suggesting or at least spread a misinformation that um, the millage rates essentially equate to much higher taxes in Warren County than in Erie County. Um, and so this letter was basically to clarify the fact that although our millage rate is much higher, an identical property in either county would still be very close to the same in terms of property tax and value. Um, <clears throat> so I have that letter prepared and it may very well be a topic of discussion at our town hall. Um, the Bureau of Audits let me know that there was, they flagged something regarded to our CEFA grants for the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency uh, from 2016. Uh, fiscal is taking care of uh, figuring out what went wrong in our reporting and will report back to us. And the last thing, um, I was contacted by uh, ProMaps. They are an organization that makes workflow documentation systems. I had the pleasure of meeting with their representative down in Pittsburgh uh, earlier this year and was very impressed with their software, but I largely put them off um, for now just because I wasn't able to focus on it but I think it's time that we start looking again at some sort of procedural documentation system I know we had wanted to do that with eye tracker but eye tracker is not really turning out to have the kind of capability that we had thought it did so my recommendation would be uh, to look for a software package that's a little bit more robust iTracker does a pretty good job in terms of incident tracking as it was designed for, but not really the procedural documentation side. And it's one thing that I would very much like to get some progress on this year. So you'll be seeing invitations from me uh, over the course of the next couple months uh, to look at ProMap um, as well as some of the other uh, software packages out there. That's it for correspondence on my part. Do either of the others have anything? Okay. Uh, last thing on announcements. On the 30th, we'll be having a work session. I've invited Beth Zimmer, who uh, is worth the Innovation Collaborative out of Erie. She will be reporting to us about uh, some recent economic development reports um, that might be of interest to us. So look forward to that. And then the work session for the 6th is canceled, correct? Because the commissioners are all in, at CCAP. So we will not be here, and the Wednesday, what would normally be the Wednesday meeting, is on Thursday the 9th at noon here. That is it for announcements. Anything else? Very good. At this time, I would ask uh, if there's any public comment. There's four things on our agenda today. Presentation and resolution uh, for... Um, the energy savings through ABM that we've been talking about, putting that out for uh, RFQ. Second is uh, narrative for approval of the narrative of the children and youth needs-based budget, ratification of an agreement with Forest and Warren counties for the joinder, uh, which is for, DA, for human services, 
And then the Pennsylvania StarNet Agreement, which uh, Public Safety will be presenting, which is kind of the compendium to the Motorola Agreement that we've already passed. So as long as it's not on those topics, at this time I'd open it up for public comment on any other topic that you might have that you want to bring before the board. Hearing none. <coughs> no, you don't have anything? Uh, not at this moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this is the agenda meet with everyone's approval. Anything missing? <coughs> have you had a chance to review the minutes of the July 11th meeting? Do they meet with your approval? Go. Okay. Fiscal report. Yeah, the fiscal report in front of you, uh, about just under 500 is currently in the general fund, 200 in the Erie Bank account. Uh, Pam has, uh, Treasurer has provided a TAN request. I believe Pam's in your office still, Pam, um, to tap that uh, tomorrow. Um, and you can see the inflows and some outflows that we have for this week and we're still we're right on track from last year for like a week to you know difference uh, from where we were pulling the pay amounts of cash flow from last year right today last year was at three million and we'll be at three million tomorrow we're at two and a half today right oh i'm sorry is this two and the yeah. two and a half is including it yeah we've we're, we're technically ahead, ahead of where we were. A little bit, sir. Just a little bit. Good. Any questions for the fiscal director? Then I would ask for a motion to approve the agenda, the minutes, and the fiscal report. So moved. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 New business. Um, ABM is here to present to us on, um, is it GISA? All right. Yeah. Gisa and uh, the procurement process for the program that we talked about in our last work session previous to this. Uh, so Commissioner angleson has got the presentation up. I'd like to invite Tyler Nichols uh, up to give the presentation. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Good afternoon. Where would you like me to stand? What's best Wherever you want. Stand over there. Where, yeah. Wherever is <laughs> comfortable for you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be referencing this uh, presentation a little bit. So, uh, again, really appreciate the opportunity to be here. My name is Tyler. I'm with ABM Building Solutions. I also have Mark Turner with me here today, one of our regional vice presidents. Uh, so, really, the reason that we're here uh, is that we believe that Warren County has an opportunity to self-fund some infrastructure and facility improvements in a way that would not require you to increase taxpayer burden. Really what I want to share with you today is just a concept overview. How it, does a program like this work? What do we see in walking the facilities here in Warren specifically? And what do we believe from a, a very high level preliminary analysis might be the potential for a project like this here in Warren? So as a little bit of a history, just very briefly, why does ABM do this? Why do programs like this exist? Really, every client that we interact with, whether it's a local government or a school district, express some, expresses to us a challenge that is represented graphically up there on the screen to my left. Essentially what we hear them say is that for the better part of the last decade or so, they have struggled to increase their revenues. That's been for a variety of factors. A lot of it is associated with the Great Recession of 2007-2008. The housing market collapsed, everybody went out and reassessed all their properties, and those property values dropped, and now your tax revenue drops. A variety of other challenges associated with that, but revenues have been fairly stagnant in most cases. At the same time, the demands on your resources, your expenses, have increased dramatically, if not exponentially, over that time period. So, unfunded state mandates, um, health care costs, pension costs have all gone up dramatically over the same time period. So it's become more and more difficult to get those two things to match up every year. This is an example of a past ABM client. Um, when, when ABM engaged with this client, they were spending roughly $900,000 a year on utilities. You can see the breakdown there. They were spending roughly $54,000 a year maintaining their facilities. And in this particular case, this client had a $325,000 a year annual debt service payment. So altogether, they were spending roughly $1.3 million in those three categories. The 
challenge that they faced, which is not unique to this client, it's true for any public entity, is that legally they were not allowed to encumber a future year's budget in order to invest in the facilities and infrastructure projects that they needed. The challenge, what ends up happening and what ended up happening with this client is that that creates a long list of unfunded capital needs throughout, throughout the county that they didn't have the ability to pay for in any given year. They didn't want to go out and increase taxes to borrow money or issue a bond on, on taxpayers, so they were left with a long list of unfunded capital needs. The cool thing about it is that the state of Pennsylvania recognized this challenge and they created legislation called Guaranteed Energy Savings Agreements that says if an accredited energy services company comes in and they identify ways to reduce your utility spend, what you're spending maintaining facilities on rep unnecessary repairs and replacements, uh, and they guarantee those savings for you, then you can legally borrow against the guarantee rather than against the taxpayer. So it becomes a budget neutral way to fund the improvements. In this particular case, ABM went out and made those improvements. We replaced lighting and HVAC, put in new building automation systems that reduce the utility usage. Uh, it was able to reduce a lot of what they were spending on repairing old equipment because we were able to go replace equipment that was beyond useful life that they hadn't been otherwise able to fund. And in this particular case, we helped them refinance some debt, um, which they decided to realize as $16,000 a year in savings over the term of the project rather than all at once. So with this particular client, we saved $257,000 annually. The way that that turns into funding for a project that you can go out and spend on your facilities and infrastructure, if you can hit that one more time, Jeff. So those three numbers there are the numbers that you see from on the previous slide, $224,000 reduced in utilities, $17,000 reduced on what they are spending maintaining and repairing facilities, and $16,000 roughly uh, saved by refinancing some debt. That adds up to the $257,000 that you see listed there. Now this particular client decided to leverage those savings over a 15 year term. So an annual savings of two fifty seven dollars over a 15 year term put $3.8 million in hand today that they were able to use to go out and make the improvements. The improvements pay for themselves over the savings over the term of the 15 years. So the reason we believe there's an opportunity here, uh, you all were gracious enough to let us walk around and see what we could see. Um, and uh, essentially we found a lot of opportunities for improved efficiencies throughout the county. So I won't read this list to you. Um, everyone's capable of reading it. Uh, happy to answer any specific questions if you have them. But you know things like LED lighting, um, new HVAC, replacing older, more inefficient equipment, new building automation systems, plug load controls, uh, building envelope improvements, windows and doors, cracks in, in, do in exterior doors. There's a lot of improvements here that make us think we can really drastically reduce what we spend it on. Again, uh, really the opportunities are not unique to the courthouse. Um, there's some pretty solid opportunities in the prison as well. Um, I would say a water control system is probably a, a really big measure that we could put in place over at the over at the jail based on what we saw there. Again, the E911 facility, a lot of the similar opportunities that we, we found at the courthouse and the jail, um, really a lot there to make us think there's, there's big efficiencies to be gained. And the same is true for the uh, District Justice and Domestic Relations Office as well. Can I answer any questions for you? What happens if you don't realize that savings and we borrow the amount of money that we're borrowing and we don't realize those savings over the 15 year period? So. Yeah, that's a great question. So that's kind of the beauty of the fact that it's uh, a state regulated legislation, uh, right? So legally, in order to utilize the legislation, ABM has to contractually guarantee the savings to you and then they have to prove it to you. So we come back with what we call a measurement verification team after we put the improvements in place. We have to send engineers out and analyze your utility spend and, and things like that to make sure that you actually realize those savings that we're saying you're gonna, gonna save. The other advantage of that is that it incentivizes us to not overpromise to you, right? Because then we're on the hook for writing a check for the difference, so.
Oh, that, you would that, be on the hook? Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. So we would guarantee, say, in, in that example, we would guarantee to you, now these aren't the real numbers, right? But, right. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, but it, we would say contractually, we will guarantee that you will realize $257,000 a year in annual savings. We have to come back and prove that to you. Mm -hmm. And if we find two hundred fifty, dollars then we have to write you a check for $7,000 mm -hmm. to make you whole. Okay. Now, the, the advantage is if, if we underestimate, then that's all, all great for the county. Right? So you keep any any extras. Great question. Uh, how about the pro procurement process? Yeah, so really the procurement process, uh, of course, uh, as a public entity, there would be a public procurement process to go through. Really the, the standard in the industry is to go through an RFQ process or a request for qualifications. Um, you would advertise a request for qualifications for interested energy services companies. ABM would, of course, be one of the companies that would respond to that RFQ uh, and be interested in working with you on a project. But you'd want to select somebody to go conduct an investment grade on it. So what we've done today is a good starting point, but it's from a very high level. Um, really what you want is a company to come in and final engineer and design a project for you and actually make a, a commitment to say this is what we can save. So that would be the next step, is to go through that pub public procurement process, advertise that RFQ, select a firm to go to that investment grade audit, and then they would come back and present their findings to you. Is your firm or any other firms approved at the state level? Yeah, so ABM is on a, a state approved uh, vendor list. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's maybe 20 something approved uh, firms in Pennsylvania that are on the state approved list. Um, and I can't remember. National Association as well. ABM's approved nationally as well. So, But that's a good question because not all firms are. So I, I would encourage you, to, you know, that's probably a good qualifier when you're talking about. And as a note for the commissioners, there are other similar firms that will be presenting at CCAP, um, the annual conference, which is in a week and a half. So I'd encourage you to talk to some of the vendors there. We will we, be there. Uh, we will be there, actually, yeah. So what, we, what I've drafted before you today is Resolution 3110, which would authorize us to put out an RFQ for energy services company our contract, rather. Um, I've also taken the liberty of going ahead and creating the request for qualifications, which you'll find attached. Um, so we don't need to vote on the, the RFQ. We could just push, we can, but I mean, certainly happy to take any recommendations. Um, but what I would ask for would be a motion to approve Resolution 3110, authorizing us to create an RFQ and put it out. As you can see, it's no cost to us. There's really no reason, in my opinion, not to request qualifications. Can I ask why we need a resolution to do that? Um, Pam, you, it's just kind of to cover us, right? But, well, I mean, yeah. it, it's just an official statement that we're making an official request. I mean, I, it's a formality. Right. We've just never done this before, so. Yeah, but we've never done any asking. Right, we've never done anything on this level. Actually, we may have done a resolution for the boiler, didn't we? No. Okay. Well, either way, this would be such a significant project that I think um, going the extra mile in terms of formality and doing a resolution seems appropriate. I'd uh, be willing to make a motion to approve resolution 3110 in support of the um, uh, RFQ process for uh, an energy services contract. I'll second it. Thank you. Um, one friendly amendment uh, it says the 25th day of June it should say July <coughs> so I had a couple questions anyway um, so the first one was is you folks did um, some evaluation of the county and the jail and our facilities uh, what generally speaking type of estimate did you come up with as far as savings like annually you know based on you can just Doesn't talk matter. right there. Wherever you want. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it was like, it was over a million dollars is really what we came back with. So we, we looked at a couple different things, um, analyzed the utility spend, and then also dug in a little bit on the uh, maintenance and repair 
not spend as well. And so it was great. It was right around one point three million dollars is what we came back preliminarily. Over the course of a and that was over fifteen years. Over fifteen years. Good. So we could see cost savings of a hundred thousand a year, basically. Uh, I think yeah, possibly. roughly. Correct. I'm surprised that you divulged that information, knowing that we're putting out an RFQ. Well, Jeff asked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't get involved in this if I didn't think there was some legitimate savings, and so uh, that's my, that's why I'm asking. You know, is that this has been evaluated and seems uh, like reasonable? Uh, a lot of times with programs like this, you know, if someone comes in and pitches it, it sounds like it's. Uh, pie in the sky thinking that it can happen and uh, I want to convey to everybody that this has been heavily evaluated and so I don't think anybody would be interested in moving forward if we didn't feel like there was um, legitimate savings. Um, this doesn't surprise me considering the fact that we have a building that's 150 years old that we still occupy and that has a lot of uh, antiquated systems still operating in it, some of which were installed decades and decades ago. So, um, you know, it doesn't surprise me that you would come up with that number, but or a number like it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you, you know, did your homework. And so. be clear, this is based off of a one-day kind of quick audit. You would be doing an investment grade audit for the actual proposal. So whichever energy uh, services company select to do that investment grade audit would come back and they would something much more uh, material in front of you, right? It would be right. engineered and designed. Uh, to Ben's point, you know, that, that is a high level. You know, I, I usually say 30,000 foot view. You know, that's a one day walkthrough. Um, that's my, myself spending some time on the utility spend and things like that, but far from what would be done for you as part of an investment grade audit with whatever energy services companies. So the audit most likely would be 90 days if you're hiring any from a company here. And that's the difference. When you get into the meat and potatoes of the program, engineering at the time, the public teaches it, it will take probably up to 90 days to ferment the right? So there's a fee involved with that? Potentially the site before the project, yes. What, what type of fees are we? It all depends on the firm, the opportunity. At this point, it would be too premature to Well, and that's the information you divulge as a part of the RFQ part process. Of the RFQ yeah. Any other questions from the board? No, I'd just like to uh, thank, um, is it ABM? It's ABM, right? Um, uh, ABM for coming in and doing the presentation, trying to explain this process. Um, it's something that we've had different conversations with different companies about, and we've, it's been challenging for everybody to kind of understand how it works. It seems backwards in some ways, but it, it actually uh, makes sense. I'd also like to thank Commissioner Kafferlin for uh, continuing to look into this process um, and following up on it because I think it's a huge opportunity for the county. We have a building that has uh, immense um, needs in order to be maintained, in order to maintain heat, energy, and um, this this project could potentially, if, if the numbers play out, um, solve a, a, a great number of issues that we have related to the maintenance and long-term care of this building, which is a hallmark of the community and is a, a treasure resource. So thank you, Commissioner Kafferlin, for thank you. continuing to look into this. Any public questions or comment? Mr. Scully? Uh, <coughs> it's a good idea that you build this, I compliment you on it. But what is the length of how long this project is going to take to complete them? You got an answer for that? And I can tell you, depending on the scope, most of the programs that ABM does, it takes about nine to 12 months to fully implement. The smaller the scope, the quicker the amount of time. And then those savings, again, would be realized over a number of years that we would negotiate, but it could be 10, 15, something like that. It all allows you to go up to 20. We just showed an example of 15, just The problem, of course, being that some of the capital asset improvements may not last 20 years, therefore we, in many situations, would not go to 20 years. The second question is, do you have to come up upstairs in the attic to see what they have in mind for 
The gutter work that's up there? I took them up there, yes. We also shared with them the feasibility study um, that was done on the roof and the exterior, so which was fairly detailed as far as like the specific kind of architectural changes that might need to be made. So, other public comments or questions, Mr. Lake. Uh, on the, the Rossi. Right. Majority of. How does that play in the county doesn't technically own that building? Probably capital assets, and that's because of the nature of the building and its ownership. We would probably need to run it through the Rouse board, which is the three of us plus two citizens. So I, I would. Just enough that there was a stumbling block in there. I mean, not no. owning that building. No, it's not the 911 center. It's the Rostanics building. I don't want to taste one-sixth of that building. Everybody keeps calling it the 911 center. Right. Right. So, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. But thanks for bringing it up. Other questions? All right. For my part, <clears throat> I very much support this process and the procurement process because I think it affords us an opportunity to um, do a lot of maintenance uh, that we would not be able to do without additional cost to the county and the taxpayer without going through a, uh, a similar program. There are also a lot of benefits that are sort of side benefits. One of them being, uh, for instance, capital volatility analysis, which ABM was sharing with us. We don't currently have a long-term capital asset plan that's adopted by the county in any meaningful sense. We have a list of things that I threw together uh, once for our fiscal department, but we don't really have a planned capital contribution every year to specific projects. We figure it out during the, the uh, budget season uh, for the next year, and even then, there's probably double the amount of capital improvements that we could do uh, or even should do, but don't have the resources to. This would help us, first of all, plan uh, for all those capital improvements and spread it out over a number of years and be aware of the volatility and uh, so we don't end up running over a cliff or maybe a future board uh, when, for instance, all the HVAC systems seem to go down in the same year like they kind of have this year. <clears throat> there are also other benefits to upgrading beyond just energy efficiency. Uh, as we move more in the world of IoT, Internet of Things uh, technology, uh, we could see, first of all, the ability of maybe the maintenance man to be able to look at his iPhone from home and see you know, whether a system is down at the courthouse and be able to work on it and uh, be forewarned. Um, <clears throat> but it also would allow opportunities to use things such as uh, automated lighting and heating and cooling and that sort of thing, which would significantly save us in um, heating and cooling and lighting costs. So I think that this is um, a great opportunity, and I want to thank especially Tyler for coming up here multiple times, meeting with us multiple uh, different ways, and uh, being very helpful in helping us understand this process. Regardless of whether we go with ABM or otherwise, we're very pleased with you and thankful for your hard work. <clears throat> Anything else before I call the question? Oh, excuse me. I want to compliment this board. They finally come up with an idea to have preventive maintenance county courthouse which has not been here for several decades and you three have made an effort to do this hopefully the town the public in the county of Warren will realize it's something that had to be done a long time ago and no board stepped forward to do this again I compliment you on your efforts and I hope you can sell it to the residents of the county thank you <clears throat> Anything else? Again, I'm just not sure why we need the formality, but here we are. So. Okay, well, the motion before us is to pass Resolution 3110 in order to authorize us to put out an RFQ for energy services contract. Uh, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> While we're on this topic, did you have a chance to look at the RFQ and was there anything that struck you odd? Or can we go ahead and approve this as is? I, I would say that I'd just like to spend 
another day on it just to look at it a little bit more. I, I had well. a chance to read through it, and but uh, there are some things that I'd like to just parse okay. through, I guess. Very really good. Look good to me. Yeah, it's a two-page document, so you should be able to look it over in 24 hours. I put the draft release date on here as today. We can easily change that to the 26th and stay on the same timeline. Um, and having the RFQs back by August 20th, that would also allow us plenty of time at CCAP in order to talk to other vendors and then open it at that work session. So please get your comments into PAM by noon tomorrow, if you have any. All right, next on the agenda is approval of the narrative for the children and youth services need-based budget. And for that, I'd like to turn it over to Meredith, Meredith Ketchum, the director, to present
developing plans to help with the truancy elimination piece for for truancy in the schools. So those are the things that we're going to be using moving forward. But we've got our plan published here. We've got our plan up at the courthouse. We have a meeting in August. So if you have questions, you can send them to me. Um, you can my phone number is eight one four. 726-8427, and I have an email. It's Ketchum Tim at WarrenCounty-HumanServices.org. Thanks. Any questions for Meredith from the board? I have a couple and a comment. Uh, so first, I wanted to ask, because I hadn't heard this before, what is graduated responses training? You have a graduated response training is training that juvenile probation officers will go through. It's a training so that they can determine the most appropriate form of punishment for whatever probation, whatever crime they've committed that put them on probation. So it could be anywhere from consent decree and to community service to possible placement depending on what it is that Okay. And you talk about implementing uh, the Pennsylvania <coughs> Detention Risk Assessment Instrument. What is That's that? another one of probation's tools. Oh, okay. That probation has, that they'll be taught how to use an assessment tool. Okay, to assess, like, I mean, what, like, is it a bribe? You don't know. I guess <laughs> the probation tool is Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share, which is a comment, is um, Meredith talked about the QSR um, uh, review, um, which the last time it was done in uh, 2014. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, being a part of that, I would like to thank Meredith and her staff for the work that they do in children and youth, just because, um, frankly, that the, those ratings should have been even higher than they were. And um, the two that were low, parent caregiver functioning and pathways to independence, um, the parent caregiver function was because a couple of the parents were uh, living out of state and had no contact, so there's very little that the agency can do. The other one was with Pathways to Independence, there were a couple of children that were babies, so the idea of having a plan for independence was really difficult uh, for the agency to come up with. And, and I was just so impressed with the ratings that the agency received through that, um, which is a pretty comprehensive review of the agency as far as they pull independent cases out. and. Um, I just I think that that uh, our children and youth department is one of the best in the state, and I think they do a fantastic job. So thank you, Meredith, for all of your efforts. Thank your department for their efforts because it really shows just even in the numbers that you provide for us. So thank you. Any other questions from the board? Comments? All right. Um, to be clear, you're asking for a motion today to approve the narrative that accompanies the needs-based budget not the plan itself. Okay, very good. Do I hear that motion? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion from the board? Thank you for all the effort that you've put in. The narrative was quite lengthy and uh, very detailed. I appreciate that. Thanks. Any public comment? All right. All those in favor of approving the narrative for the Children and Youth Services Needs-Based Budget as um, presented to us, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is ratification of a joint a, the, um, amendment to the joinder agreement for the Department of Human Services. And to talk about that, I'd like to invite Rana Tipton to tell us what it's all about. Um, thank you. Essentially, um, up until recently, Warren County Children and Youth was part of um, the joinder of Forest Born Human Services. Forest County Children and Youth has been separated from that joinder for many years. And with the change of administration at Human Services, um, the decision was made by all six commissioners to remove Warren County from the joinder of Forest and Warren. So essentially this agreement, um, which was reviewed by solicitors and whatnot, to agree to that separation. Right, okay. And this has been passed through the governing board yes. and Forest County either has passed or will pass it. I believe they have gone through their solicitor and they have agreed to it. Okay. And the solicitor has reviewed it for, Reen has reviewed this, correct? In fact, yes. she, doc, she authored it. Yes. Okay. Very good. Any questions for Rana or, I'm sorry, or Meredith? I didn't 
didn't think of that. It probably has more to do with Meredith, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I, yeah. I just stress that this is specific to children and youth. Right. Which, in, in most technical senses, has, you know, and is directly under the commissioners of Warren County, not the joinder. But, in fact, in some ways, they share some liability, bank accounts, that sort of thing. So this just will purely bifurcate human services, which is still joined between the two counties and children and youth. The right. joint services continue to be in mental health, developmental disabilities, early intervention, and drug and alcohol. Yeah, and intake covers all. Intake is joint. Okay. All right, any other questions? Public comment? Um, all right, I would ask for a motion to ratify the joinder agreement before us today. So moved. I'll second. Discussion? Public comment? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Last on our agenda um, is an agreement with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to have the county access their StarNet um, <clears throat> system. So it's been a big point of discussion now for several meetings, uh, but a sort of ancillary part of the discussion. Uh, we have been passing agreements with Motorola in order to get us on this StarNet system. Um, and we've been operating, of course, with the consent and um, encouragement of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. But it is, after all, the Commonwealth that owns this system. And so we need an agreement, even if it's a formality, uh, with the Commonwealth itself in order to let Motorola or allow Motorola to get us on the system. Um, so before us today is an agreement with them specific to Starnet. Uh, Director Lake, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, the only thing I would add, Commissioner, is this is just, it's more or less we're formalizing the handshake agreement we have that the state says, you can use our system. The, the legislator said, let everybody use the system and for free, and this is just the formality. I know that's one of the questions that, that uh, Commissioner Morrison had that was like, Okay, what, what says what says that they know a handshake all of a sudden next year becomes a hundred thousand dollar bill? This eliminates that. It's, it's, we'll review it again in five years, but both parties have three years. And they have to get three years notice to get out of it. So five year renewal and three years. So that's that's eight years. That gets us through two two governorship elections. So it gets us pretty safe that you know that we're not going to you know two years from now all of a sudden get a bill that says, oh, you're on our system, you pay your whatever. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, it's formalizing the handshake that we've, that the legislators told the state radio office to do, and the state radio office making that offer. It's, it's going to be a legalization of all of it. Okay, very good. Any questions for Mr. Lake from the board? I have a question. Compliment you on the fact that you got it in black and white. Handshake's a nice gesture, but it always can disappear within a short period of time. They have it documented now that they can use it. So, right. again, if they don't put it in writing, you can't hold nobody to it. Yep. So, and just to be clear, so because um, the, the point you brought up about the three years is very important. Um, and it's something that I don't think that we spoke too much about in relation to this deal just in general, is that if, as a part of this system, we're going to be abandoning a majority of the tower sites that we currently operate, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so... A lot of the smaller ones in Because currently we operate 11 tower sites. So the majority of those are going to be essentially abandoned. Like in, in many cases, the equipment's going to be removed and used for other purposes, resold, whatever. Um, and and right now we have yeah, we have we have maintenance on all of these tower sites currently that we pay. And then the municipalities in many cases if they utilize them, they pay some portion of the maintenance and upkeep of the tower sites or utilization of them. Um, with this contract there will be no payment to the state whatsoever from the county. And so we're trading our tower system for their tower system they're allowing us to use it and there's no cost correct yeah so that's really important to keep in mind as far as savings goes a b if for some reason the state 
decided at some point that they wanted to kick us off their system or you know change the agreement in some way we would have to have a period of time to reconstitute those power sites if we were going to do our own radio system and I think that's the thing that's important to keep in mind with this is this formalizes that process which I think is really important because like you said I don't personally think that'll ever happen but with the state of Pennsylvania I don't I don't take anything for granted <laughs> so yeah so I, I appreciate you uh, working to put this together and and to figure out some and, and of those details you know, we, we discussed about the longer terms but there's also that how the you know technology changes you know it seems like you, you get a brand new cell phone and three days later there's a new one out that's better and cheaper and everything so there's always that out for both the state and the, you know the, something better comes along we can both move to chances of you know of it happening you know in the next three years there's always a lot of smart people out there doing smart things things can get so we do we do have an out if we need something better comes along very good all right, with that, I'd ask for a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement between Warren County and the Pennsylvania State Police for the use of the Pennsylvania State <coughs> Radio Network System. I move that. I make that motion. I'm sorry. I'll second. Further discussion from the board? Any public comment or questions? Very good. All those in favor of the Starnet Agreement, please state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. In terms of a personnel report, uh, since our last, well, actually since the beginning of July, uh, Joshua Walker <coughs> has been hired at Children and Youth as a caseworker one at a rate of $15.06 an hour, effective July 9th. Stephanie Redfield uh, has been hired uh, effective July 30th in tax claim as an administrative assistant at $11.08 an hour. Tyler Wagner in the Sheriff's Office has gone from full-time to part-time deputy, and there have been no separations. I hear a motion to ratify the personnel report. So moved. No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. At this time, I would ask if the commissioners have anything further they want to say. Nothing. All right. Any last chance for public comment? Mr. Burris? Just one that uh, <coughs> everyone knows that my office will be split the week of the fair. Uh, Dolores will be in the office. I will be at the fair all week. Okay. And I'll be joined by her. Okay. Very good. Anything else? Then I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.